getting people to realize you are that subject matter expert on this niche mm -hmm. or these for us, it's six niches, but on these niches and and from day one, I came out of public accounting. So I was, you know, managing partner of a CPA firm, managing partner again, probably yeah. shouldn't have been, but I was managing partner of a yeah. CPA firm. Um, merged that with another firm. And then after a little hiatus, that's where Trimeric came out, which is our specialty tax mm -hmm. firm. And so from day one, my idea, idea was we are not going straight to taxpayers to generate business. We are going to the CPA firms. We're going to educate back to education, which is a passion of mine. We're going to educate the CPA firms on what these incentives are. We're not selling an education at all. We're educating. We're getting them to realize that we are the experts. And once they realize that, they're going to come to us to help them with the tax return. I guess the stumbling block is people don't trust you immediately. They're not going to yeah. believe you know what you're talking about immediately. And we knew that. We actually said this is going to be a two-year, two, three-year process to really get people to feel comfortable that we are that firm. And so so we 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 planned with that. But every time we join, and we get a lot of our CPA firm relationships from CPA associations. So every time we took a, joined a new association, it was like, all right, remember, it's going to take time. They're not they're not going to trust that you are that expert immediately and don't go out and sell because this is a mantra of mine. CPAs don't like to be sold to. Mm -hmm. They like, and maybe it's just my mindset, but they like to be educated. They like to know that somebody's there to help them with something. You know, they know the tax code exists. They know parts of it. They're not an expert at everything. So don't go out and just sell, 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 sell. Go out and explain what this is and how we can help them. So I guess the, the biggest thing was just getting your your reputation built in the industry. Um, be, and, and honestly, when we first started, there was some negative things going on in the industry. So we had to overcome the overall general negatives as well, which which uh, in the long run helped us. Well, I, we always had family dinners together. And so I, I grew up one of four siblings uh, uh, with my mom and dad in the northwest suburbs of Chicago. And, and we sat down for dinner and we do that as a family now, my wife and I and our kids, but sat down for dinner every every night. And it was three boys for the most part growing up because our sis, my sister was 13 years behind. So okay. the, the growing up part was mainly the three of us until she came around a little later. But it was mainly sitting around the table trying not to uh, get in wrestling matches and, <laughs> and talking about whatever sporting events we were doing that day. Yeah. Typical, typical boys, right? That, that's yep. awesome. That's awesome. Now, you mentioned you were, we were chatting before, um, you know, we started recording here that you started your first business when you were about 16 or so. What, what, what was the business and what, you know, drove you to say, Hey, there's something here. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to hang my shingle at you know such a young age. Well, so 16 and, and, you know, if I can remember, I'm, I'll be 60 in a, a couple of weeks here. So we'll see how, how good my memory is. <laughs> um, but, but at 16, even then I realized I did not want to work for someone and it's mm -hmm. more just a personal thing. It's like, I don't like taking directions, which is a problem. It's mm -hmm. a skill I've, I've, I've had to get better at and I have, um, but I think it was partly that. And I just, you know, you see opportunities and that there's opportunity, and I'm going to go on a tangent here. There's opportunities in front of everybody every day. Mm -hmm. And some people mm -hmm. act on them. Some people don't, you don't have to, but for me, it was like, Hey, I, I don't remember what was the, what caused it, but I saw that there was this need for window washing is okay. what I was doing back then. And I don't know if it was a need or it was just like, Hey, I can do this. I know how to, you know, put a rag across a window and, and, you know, figured out the right uh, uh, formula to use to wash mm -hmm. windows. And I was like, you know, rather than go flip burgers at, I won't name anywhere specific, but, uh, you know, for $2 an hour, I'm going to start uh, this window washing company. And then I ended up hiring my friends and, and I was paying them probably three times with the minimum wage and we were all making good money and we were all had yeah. our own schedule and it was a lot of fun. So uh, it was just, I think, a matter of me realizing I didn't want to sit in one spot forever working for someone else and, you know, yeah. flipping burgers or whatever it was. I love it. I love it. And and were you inspired, you know, maybe your parents or, or someone like that, that, you know, Hey, maybe there's something else that you don't have to, you don't have to go out and get like a, you know, first job burger flipping or whatever it is. Um, or is this something that just came to you sort of naturally that, Hey, I'm going to go out and, and do this on my own. Yeah, it was not, you know, my, neither of my parents were entrepreneurs. My dad 
always had this in the back of his mind and I know, but he didn't talk about much that he wanted a business. Um, but my dad, you know, family was first for him. And that was the most important thing is the security. And my dad worked for the same company for, uh, 39 years, I think, wow. um, wow. you know, started when he was 20 or 19 probably and retired when he was 58. So, yeah. so I, I, I look back now and I know, yeah, you know, I know he wanted this and I know he had thought this, but he never pushed it to us saying, this is what you should do. This is what, you... but he yeah. always, he did talk about one thing. He was in the army, um, for two years and, and, uh, that was one thing he did not want us to do. And I think it was the, 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 the inability to do what you wanted when you wanted, yeah. which is probably something that sunk into me was like, that's why I want to be in control of this. That's why I want to start this business. Cause I want to be able to make the decisions and decide when I'm doing what. Yeah. Makes perfect sense. And, and what happened next? Have you ever worked for anybody or is, has, uh, entrepreneurialism, you know, pretty well engulfed your entire, entire life. I did when I graduated college. So I'm a CPA. I graduated actually computer science and, and I went to work for a big company for a year but immediately I was looking like, Hey, can I start a, a, a sub shop? Can I open a deli? Can I, what, what I was looking at franchises. I was looking at these things. So it was always in my mind, you know, that, that some kind of business. And, uh, after a year of, of being a computer programmer, I realized that, uh, at least the place I was working kind of turned me off to programming. Mm -hmm. um, and it was the place I was working. It's a great job. It's a great profession. My, my eldest is in uh, a, a IT right now, and, and it's awesome to be yeah. in. It just yeah. was, uh, I was turned off with it. Uh, and so I decided, and this is probably part of it too, hey, I know some people in sales and they're doing pretty well. I should go sell. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, um, I went and sold food. I was a food broker. And I was awful at it. I, had no I just was going to ask if you were, you know, how well that went for you. That's, no, that's great. <laughs> no, it was terrible. It was, it was, I just didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know how to do it. Uh, um, I, I, I tried, but it, it was not good. And then one day I'm giving you a long story to your short question, I think. But then one day I was driving down at, if anybody's familiar, Chicago, North Avenue, and this will age me as well. I got this great idea in my head. I should have been a CPA. I pulled off. I found this is where it'll age me. I found the first phone booth I could uh -huh. and I got out. I called my wife. I said, Hey, I'm going to quit my job. I'm going to go back to school full time and I'm going to uh, uh, become a CPA. And then I'm going to open my own practice four years after I start uh, uh, in, in public accounting. And mm -hmm. that's really, so I did the, the, the IT, I did the food broker. I then uh, working for another firm for three years and then went out and started my own firm. Interesting. So what, what was it about a CPA that, that, you inspired you that, that like, it, it, that doesn't even feel right coming off of my lips, like, you know, CPA <laughs> and inspiration, like what, what, what was the draw to that? It, it, and I, and I, I remember this now and probably for a while I didn't, but it was, we were newly married and it was our first tax return filing time. And, and my dad had always done my tax return. And, mm -hmm. and this time I'm going to do my tax return. And I started looking at the forms and the instructions and I just loved it. I was like, wow. And I was, math was my thing. Not that you need math to be a CPA. It's just people equate it that way, but you're working with numbers. Yeah. And so math was my thing growing up. I mean, for, and this I'll sound kind of geeky, but for fun in grade school, I would do multiplication tables and, and it was just, you know, I, it was, I knew them inside and outside and backwards and forwards yeah. and everything. And so I was doing our tax return and I really liked it, but it didn't sink in. Then it took that, you know, I was probably at some sales call and realized, I don't know what I'm doing. And then my mind started thinking, Hey, I really enjoyed doing that tax return. Why, why don't I be a CPA? And yeah, that was it. Love it. I love it. So, so you started your uh, CPA company uh, after graduation or after, I should say after, yeah, I guess after graduation. Um, what were some of the challenges that you ran into, you know, starting up something like that? I'm assuming right out of school. Yeah. I mean, you didn't really uh, have three years after I finished. I, I never, I never got my, um, accounting degree. I got, I took enough, uh, uh, 
classes in the master program to be able to sit for the CPA exam. And that was okay. the key. I wanted to be a CPA. So okay. I actually don't have an accounting degree. I have a, a, a computer science degree and I have a lot of accounting classes, uh, just not the degree. So I, I became a CPA. Then I went to work for a small firm locally and that was on purpose because I wanted to start my own firm and I didn't want to go work for one of the big, at that time was big eight firms, mm -hmm. the big four now, because I want to learn everything. I want to be doing taxes. I want to do audit. I want to do whatever there is. And, and, and those were the two main things at that time. Um, and so I went to work for them for three years and they were great. Really two partners there, both great guys. Enjoy them. Uh, I haven't had contact in a few years, but I really need to reach out to them again. Um, and so then the question is challenges, correct? That uh, mm -hmm. when I started mm -hmm. the firm. Yes. Yeah, I didn't again. I jump into things. I don't see, I don't see that there is, uh, you should be nervous or you should, uh, have, you know, see that there's obstacles in the way, which that's a, that's a detriment somewhat. I should yeah. see that more. Um, so I just jumped into it and I really didn't have any idea how to run a firm. I knew how to talk to a client. I knew how to do a tax return. I knew how to do counting, but then the overall just management of the firm, mm -hmm. that was just not something skill set I had. I I'm, I'm kind of a, an idea person, you know, from yeah. a standpoint, uh, yeah, Hey, we can do this. I see the opportunity. Let's do it. Um, I've never been the implementer that much. And I, yeah. and it, took me and this is we can go deep into this at some point if you want but it took me to my mid 50s to realize that's not a skill set of mine and that's something i should have known a lot earlier in my yeah. life so so how did you how did you present yourself and i'm i'm i don't want to i don't want to lead the answer too much but yep. but um how how were other others perceiving you know your direction when at least from your perspective, how do you, looking back on it, knowing what you know now, you know, what were you doing to people or what were you adding to the situation that says, you know, I'm not good at this. This is not my skill set in your, in your own mind. Yeah. That makes sense? I, yeah. It, it, I, and I, I'm going to try to answer this, but I'm not sure I had the answer right off the top of my head. Cause uh, the one thing is I'm really good at is being an educator. I can educate on things I'm passionate about, which is specialty tax topics, uh, just you know, um, you know, self-evaluation of your skills and what you're good at, what you're passionate about, and what you're not good at. I can talk about that. I can educate on that. I'm not good at educating on as much as I think the how-to when I'm not passionate about it. And so with accounting, you know, accounting to me is boring. I like tax. You know, people think accountants, they think accounting, you know, that's not your, just because you are a CPA doesn't mean accounting's your thing because tax is completely different than accounting in my mind. And so we were doing a lot of accounting work though. And I probably just would hand that off and let people do it and, and, and didn't review it as much as I should, didn't, uh, ed, you know, educate them on the process of doing it. Like I should, it was just like, here, yeah, you should do this when it was the tax end of things, and this is, I don't know why this didn't kick in, but when it was the tax end of things, oh yeah, I'll talk tax. So let's, yeah, this and this, and don't forget about that. And this deduction here, and hey, we can save money by doing this. That I would get excited about and passionate about. I didn't see that in myself for years, that there was a disconnect between the things that I was passionate about and how I communicated on that end compared to how the things I was not as passionate about and how I communicated on that thing. Yeah. So it was just, you, you, if you look back now, he just, he just didn't like that part. He wasn't passionate about that part. So he didn't spend his time on it. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's great. And, and so, so you also mentioned, you know, before we start recording here that um, you now have a, a team, you have employees that, uh, you know, you hand those things off to, you know, when, when you're not passionate about it or something that you know that you're not good at, how do you, how do you personally identify the things? I mean, is it, is it just a feeling that you have that, Hey, you know what, this isn't something I'm passionate about. I got to get rid of this, you know, as quickly as I possibly can, or is there some kind of a, you know, I'm going to dip my toe in the water and, and, you know, see what I think about this and, and kind of experiment with it for a little while. And then maybe if I don't like it, then I'm going to hand it off. Is there, is there any kind of process that you go through to, to help identify, you know, that that is, or isn't a good thing that I should be doing? And, and how do you recognize that, you know, when you do, you'll know, come across those, those different situations? 
Yep. And so I can go the long answer of how this changed, or I can go the short answer and, uh, and just tell you that right now, it's just my passion is educating on tax topics. So mm -hmm. if it's a podcast that I'm either the host on or I'm being interviewed on, mm -hmm. I'm doing it. Yeah. If it's if it's an article that we're going to write for, you know, I've had a bunch of articles published in three different industry journals recently, which is not even necessarily a tax topic. I one of them was about the benefits of hiring individuals with disabilities, but there's mm -hmm. tax tied to that as well, potentially. I, I, I'll do that. If it's a, a, a webinar that we're going to go out and speak, if it's a it's speaking event at an association, at a conference, um, all those things I'm going to do. But that's a very, it sounds like a very small window of things. Mm -hmm. I'm very busy with it and love every single minute. So it, it to me, it was just identifying that those are the things that I like and those are those things I'm really good at. Um, no, it sounds like I have a big ego, but I am good no, at it. Oh, good. Uh, um, uh, so it's really good at. So that means that that in most businesses is probably a, sm a pretty small portion of overall business. Mm -hmm. For us, it's been a, a, a huge, from a growth standpoint, me getting out in front of people, but there is 95% of the operations that I'm not touching now. And so as an example, and, and we have really good people. We're, I'm very fortunate. We've had some significant growth in the last handful of years, really since I switched my role. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Since yeah. I switched my role from managing <laughs> partner, which is not the skill set I have, yeah. to this person that's out in front and, and the face of the operations and out, you know, talking and educating. Um, we're up 800% as a business wow. in that five year time. So it was important, but it's not just because I changed this, it's because we also put my partner in charge of the firm. He's a managing partner, and it is his skill set to a T. I mean, it we should have done this years ago and 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 we did it. And so um, an example is two years ago or a little over a year ago, some significant tax incentives came out because of COVID. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the employee retention credit is a, a big one that I just, when this came out, and again, I'm a little geeky when it comes to tax, but I, I got enthralled with this and I started reading it and I started learning everything about it. And I, I felt, hey, I can go educate on this. I wasn't yeah. even thinking that this was going to be a service we do. I thought it could be, but I didn't think we were prepared. We, we, we just didn't have the people in place, I didn't think, to, to do this. And so one of our newer people um, who I'd known for years, worked with them short time, 16 years ago, um, just came to work with us a year and a half ago was talking to me about it and, and saying, hey, you know, people are doing this as a service. We should do that. I go, here's the deal. I'll learn everything about it. I'll educate everybody in the country on this. I will become a, a subject matter expert on it. I'm not putting the program in place. It's yeah. just, I, I've over the years learned that I can't, that's not my thing. Um, and so if you, Barry Devine is, is the gentleman, if you want to put this together, you know, the, the, the internal program to run this, have at it. Um, it's, mm -hmm. it's yours. And he did. And he did an awesome job putting that together. And now last year, 2021 and 2022, it'll be our largest revenue uh, portion wow. of the business. And that wow. didn't exist just over a year ago. And so, you know, that's where I was saying earlier, I'm not the implementer. I can, I can have mm -hmm. ideas. I can do this other stuff. And then I, I, right there, it's like, okay, I'm handing this off. We yeah. should do this. I'm, I'm not completely sure we're going to be prepared. We ran and we were, we just out of the gates flying and we've done a ton of business with this. So that's, that's a, just an example. Yeah, no. So, so you as the, the, you know, the leader of the company handing that off to somebody else, um, and you've known this person for quite some time, were you confident in his ability to be able to, to do it? Or is it, you know, let's try it and see what happens? Or what was, what was kind of your mindset, you know, going through when you were making that decision of, okay, let's, let's give this a try. Yeah. This specific program yeah. I was just talking about, right? Yep. Yeah. So, so I, it was like, okay, I know we will generate business with this just because I'm going to be out talking about it. Mm -hmm. So I originally thought, well, should we just find an outsource partner that, you know, has the resources internal to do this, you know, off the bat. And so that's what I was looking at um, right away. And so we had that as a backup if we needed it. So I had mm -hmm. talked to them, I'd work with them, people I know. And it's like, 
you know, we can do this. And we did a couple projects with them at the beginning just to, to see how it went. But, you know, Barry got this set up so fast and, and you know, I'm very confident in our people. Um, and we have an unbelievable group. I mean, honestly, I'll probably start tearing up when I talk about it because we have such a good group, yeah. hardworking, but have fun, know their stuff, not afraid to make suggestions like Barry did, not afraid to, to you know, run with a, an idea, which I think as a leader, you need to, I'm going on tangents now, you have to give people that freedom because mm -hmm. that's how you grow as a business. Mm -hmm. It's not my ideas that do it. It's everybody's ideas. And so, so once we saw, I saw that we put this together, it was like, yeah, okay, we're good. And, and we have a better program in place than anybody, you know, a month into it, I thought. And mm -hmm. now, you know, 13, 14 months later, it's, you know, I, 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 you know, what we put out as a product, I don't think anybody can touch. That's, that's amazing. That's great. Um, when you, when you are, when you started to, um, how, how can I say this? So when you were, when you were, um, having them, you know, implement all of these, these, or I, I don't even say you, when, when your team was, was implementing all of these things, uh, it, it sounds like there was already a, a, an element of a great culture that had, had been created. So did you purposely, you know, take any steps you, when you were forming all of this, did you purposely take any steps or, or like, you know, do your core values and, and put that all together so that you were attracting those people that, like you said, you, you mentioned that, you know, it's a, it sounds like it's a fun place to work. You know, you it, it, people aren't, you know, take it or they're not overly serious about things and they're, you know, they're, they're willing to, to you know, step out and take those risks. So all of those are, are, you know, great elements to be able to have in a company. Did you purposely set that in place or is that something that just sort of spawned on its own? Yeah, I, it's, it's, I think I've always kind of tried to project that, but I think it's more so even since, since I was stepped down as managing partner, that that ideal has gone out there. Uh, I, I mean, I'm constantly in, in, you know, it's a little bit of a joke sometimes, but, but, you know, when I'm sitting talking with somebody in the, in our team, either on, you know, Zoom or Teams or whatever, you know, I'll, I'll tell people, you're the most important person in this business because mm -hmm. they are. I mean, mm -hmm. everybody is, but the, you know, I'll tell them that. And so, you know, and, and the, and, and I get joy. I honestly do. And you know, I'm older now, but, but out of uh, seeing the growth that people have gone through in yeah. the business as well. So, so we had core values on how we do projects to go to answer your question. We had core values on how we do projects. We started as an R and D tax credit firm solely, and mm -hmm. that's a very intricate part of the tax code and the, and the deliverable is very uh, specific on the, how we want to put it together. We followed that same path with this new offering, the employee retention credit. Mm -hmm. And so we had the, we had the, the, uh, the, 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 whatever the platform in place or the, the tools in place. And we were able to change some of the people from R and D to ERC, but we've hired, I don't even know how many additional people in the last year and a half, 15, 20 people that wow. all have experience in the industry in general, especially tax. Yeah. Nobody had experience in employee retention credit because it's new, but they were able to take that specialty tax knowledge they had and procedures they had, learn our systems, and then put this into place with this new offering. Got it. Got it. Um, what were what were some of the, the things that you like some of the stumbling blocks that you've ran into in the last year and a half. I mean, it, it sounds like you've, you've developed something that uh, is, is very sort of niche, very specific. Um, and I, I think what a lot of people approach a business, I'm going to do everything. I, you know, I want to be, you know, the, the, the king of this, you know, of this realm, you decided to, to niche it down yep. um, and be very, very focused and specific. Um, what, what were some of the challenges that you maybe ran into and, and maybe there weren't any, um, but, but, you know, having such a, uh, such a focus on what you actually do, did you, did you run into any, any issues or anything that come to mind as far as, you know, sort of trying to, to, to niche yourself, um, you know, so yep. specifically? Yeah. So, so we're talking business in general now, yeah. not this yeah, just yeah, one yeah. offering. And, yep. and that's a great question because it is, you know, being niche you know, there's a need for us. Mm -hmm. the, 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 
I don't know if it's stumbling block, but the key is getting people to realize you are that subject matter expert on this niche. Mm-hmm. And these for us, it's six niches, but on these niches and and from day one, I came out of public accounting. So I was, you know, managing partner of a CPA firm, managing partner again, probably yeah. shouldn't have been, but I was managing partner of a yeah. CPA firm, um, merged that with another firm. And then after a little hiatus, that's where Trimeric came out, which is our specialty tax mm-hmm. firm. And so from day one, my idea, idea was we are not going straight to taxpayers to generate business. Mm-hmm. We are going to the CPA firms. We're going to educate back to education, which is a passion of mine. We're going to educate the CPA firms on what these incentives are. We're not selling an education at all. We're educating. We're getting them to realize that we are the experts. And once they realize that, they're going to come to us to help them with the tax return. I guess the stumbling block is people don't trust you immediately. They're not going to believe you know what you're talking about immediately. And we knew that. We actually said this is going to be a two-year, two, three-year process to really get people to feel comfortable that we are that firm. And so so we, we, we planned with that. But every time... We join and we get a lot of our CPA firm relationships from CPA associations. So every time we took it, joined a new association, I was like, all right, remember, it's going to take time. They're not, they're not going to trust that you are that expert immediately and don't go out and sell because this is a mantra of mine. CPAs don't like to be sold to. Mm -hmm. They like, and maybe it's just my mindset, but they like to be educated. They like to know that somebody's there to help them with something. You know, they know the tax code exists. They know parts of it. They're not an expert at everything. So don't go out and just sell, 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 sell. Go out and explain what this is and how we can help them. So I guess the, the biggest thing was just getting your, your reputation built in the industry. Um, be, and, and honestly, when we first started, there was some negative things going on in the industry. So we had to overcome the overall general negatives as well, which, which uh, I, in the long run helped us. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's really interesting. So uh, I've, I'm, I've never done it myself. I've never, I've never, um, you know, niched into a specific industry and, um, you know, been the thought leader on that industry. Um, I, I've, I've, heard of many people who have done that when when you were setting out to to accomplish that did you get any type of um i don't really know how to how to say this but but not pushback but um maybe maybe disenfranchisement you know in your own direction um is this going to work or is this not going to work? Because people, you know, once they learn whatever it is that you're teaching, once they learn whatever it is, you know, they're going to say, Oh, I can, you know, I'll do just do that myself. So, so I guess that there's that, that mentality of, you know, I'm, I'm teaching you everything that you need to know. um, But yet why want you to come back to me, you know, to, to help when the time comes. So, so did you ever have any of that sort of balancing where, you know, here, here's a line that, that we don't want to cross because then that's sort of like that, that's the secret sauce or is it, is it give them everything, let them know that, you know, you're the expert and then, you know, uh, playing on the fact that people want help, they want, you know, they want to be led, um, you know, they're going to come back to you when they get into those situations. Yeah, so one of my one of my new mantras, but it's always been my mindset, but I've just say it, say it a lot more lately is share your knowledge, and and to me that's huge, especially when we're talking complex tax issues like this, mm-hmm. because I can educate all day long. I I and I tell people from the beginning, I'm saying my education is you you're not going to be an expert. It's just you don't have the 15 year experience, 15 years experience I have. You're not going to be an expert after this hour webinar I'm giving you or yeah. this hour presentation or the hour at this conference. You're not going to be an expert. My goal is to help you identify opportunities within your client base that you as the CPA can go and save them money. You as a CPA can go and be the hero to your client. You go in and you tell them they're getting a hundred thousand dollar refund. We helped you with that. We don't want the credit. We want you to get that credit. And yeah. so, so that's that's a key thing. Is it 
in, I mean, if I did a, a, a two month course with somebody, yeah, maybe they could start going to do it themselves. They don't have the time to do that. Mm -hmm. I want them to be able to identify opportunities for them to bring saving opportunities to their clients. And then their clients are going to come give them a big bear hug because they just gave them a $100,000 check yeah, um, rather yeah. than tell them they owe 100000 So it really wasn't a concern. We have had a few um, um, CPAs that have decided we're going to do it internally, which is fine. I tell them any questions, you reach out to me. I'm, I'm available anytime. If you know, Hey, I want you to do this right. If nothing else, I want this done right. Mm -hmm. And if I can help you do that, that, uh, you know, great. Yeah. Yeah. That, no, that's, that's, that's a great answer. Um, talk a little bit about what, what types of companies or what types of situations uh, you can help with. And, and I, I don't know how, how deep of a rabbit hole that may be, but you know, in, in a, you know, in a, um, you know, a, a brief explanation. Yes. W you know, what types of companies is it? What types of situations, you yep. know, can you, can you help with? Yeah. So there's really, uh, uh, our six services, you can probably put into three different buckets. Um, R and D tax credits, anybody that's developing a new or improved product or process, manufacturers, software developers, architects, engineers. That's the, the main users of that. So it's a, a technical engineering type aspect. Mm -hmm. uh, we, do, we do things that are, are real estate related. And so anybody that owns either residential rental property or commercial property, we can help with some energy incentives mm -hmm. or some uh, depreciation acceleration. So, you know, first one R&D, second one, three different things that relate to real estate. And then the last two are all employee related. So employee retention credit and work opportunity tax credit. So anybody that's has employees, basically, you know, the one you have to have some kind of effect due to COVID, you know, and you go qualify for the other one, you just have to be hiring new individuals on an ongoing basis and you can potentially qualify. Mm -hmm. So, so those are really the three key areas of, of uh, things we can help with. Yeah, no, that that's a you you kind of rung a bell in my head with a couple of those things as well. So so if if myself as a uh, consumer, I guess, or a a you know another business owner, and I have my own CPA, uh, can I can I say, hey, you know, is there is there material or something like that? Hey, check this out with this guy, or you know, I want to I want to explore this. Like, what what would be the best way? I guess you can say to you know, introduce my accountant as a client, you know, to you. Is that, is that how it would work or any, yeah. any thoughts there? Yeah, it's normally, you know, they, they probably know, have heard of what we do. It's just, they're not going to be an expert. I'll almost guarantee it. Cause it's, mm -hmm. it's tough to, to be an expert in everything in tax. And so we just, you know, we have a one page brochure that explains everything. I love getting on a call with anybody just say, Hey, you know, here's what it is. Any questions I can answer. Um, and, and, or just an email introduction. That's normally how it goes. Um, most, most of our relationships are built out of our associations though, that we are, are supporting either as a sponsor or a member. Um, but yeah, we get that, we get that introduction and, you know, the one, you know, who nobody really wants this one page brochure and I'm going to read it. I, I'm not, it's yeah, more yeah. A, a let's talk and I can explain things that, that I can tell you, you potentially can save your clients money with. Yeah, no, I love it. I love it. And, and if people wanted to learn more about you or your services, what would be the best way to reach out, get in touch? Yeah. Well, if you went to our website, which is try merit.com. There's a, I think, meet the team or something where everybody's contact information's up there. Mine's up there. Um, you can reach out. There's just an info at too, where it'll go to a general, you know, we have a, a marketing team that tracks all that and gets it to the right person as well. So emails or just go to the website and track it from there. Love it. Love it, Randy. This has been fantastic. Love, love your, your passion as sick as it might sound, love your passion for numbers and taxes and all of that. That's, uh, that's really, really cool. Somebody's got to do it. Right. I mean, yep. it's not, not me. I, I know I'm not the tax guy. So kudos <laughs> to you. <laughs> well, I appreciate it, but my passions, that's small niche area, which is so much fun. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Thank you, Randy. Thanks for the time and, uh, love what you're doing. Love, love the, the approach that you're taking too, with getting out and teaching people and, you know, spending time with people like me and, and, uh, you know, educating myself a little bit on, on, uh, you know, some of these topics too. So many thanks. Well, thank you, Matt.